uh, the individuals are accruing mutations rapidly over this short period of time. They all trace back to the ancestral group 6,000 years ago. So as we like to say, everything comes back as spokes on a wheel instead of trees where some individuals are more related to others and some groups are more related to others, some share more variants uh, with some individuals than others. If you apply this to, um, um, well, there's a worse problem still, which I'll go over in, in two minutes' time. I don't want to introduce too much uh, science into this revival meeting, but I want to introduce a little bit. <laughs> the, genetic, the genetic code is redundant. That is, there's some uh, codes that code for the same amino acid. So you can get a mutation from one code there to the other, still produces the same protein, still the identical same individual. We, uh, we don't think natural selection acts on those genes or acts extremely weakly because it produces the same individual. Now those change over time due to random processes, and these have been studied in some depth in the lab, and they fit logic. Uh, and they start to diverge from each other solely because of random uh, factors. Some individuals breed, some don't, and so some variants which are coding for the same thing become more frequent and others less frequent. They evolve by a random walk. Well, the interesting thing about random walks is that they tell time. Because the longer the time for the walk, the further apart two originally identical molecules are going to become at these synonymous sites. Now, two things uh, 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 can be concluded from a world of data on these synonymous sites. Uh, first of all, they provide a congruent system of dating which is congruent with the strata and the phylogeny. That's a very curious fact that didn't get explained by his fantasy about uh, sorting by size uh, during the flood. Uh, how is it that individuals that are further down uh, show greater divergence due to random walk at these synonymous sites? And the second thing that's interesting about these data is if you are given an anchor point, that is one point in time in the past whose actual time you know, not relative time, but like it's, uh, you dated from the methods I was telling you, geological clocks, you said it's 200 million years. Then you can use all of the data on synonymous sites since then to give exact times to the splits of other species. And you can check them both against the geological record and against the timing. And once again, it's congruent. I'm thinking of forming an organization called Liars for Jesus. I'm willing to lie for my Lord. That's right. I'm willing to lie for Jesus. I'm willing to pillory people whose work I, I, I do not uh, study or understand. I'm willing to make a fraudulent uh, challenge, my quarter million dollar challenge. I'm willing to uh, make just flat assertions about what's known or what isn't known in a vast scientific enterprise that's occupied the serious attention of serious people, uh, over hundreds of thousands of them, up to a million scientists working on this over the years. And I hope Mr. Hoven will be uh, honorary president of the organization that maybe I can find a role in it for Mr. Guarneri as well. I just want to end by saying that one of the most disturbing aspects of, of this and, and a sense of the uh, uh, orientation of many of you is that I regard the religion that's being pushed as being almost as bad as the anti-science. I think he's giving you a double bad deal. He ain't giving you no science, and he's misrepresenting that. And the religion he's selling you, to me, is infantile. It's arrogant and blasphemous to tell God how creation occurred, how God created this earth. How dare he? And reducing God to an anthropocentric midget, the, the, the organism that created this vast universe is just this trivial creature running things uh, for the benefit of uh, humans and a particular group of humans right now. I think it's pathetic. Jesus warned against those who would come in his name as false prophets. 
who would, who would come crying in his name, and he, and he said, beware of them. Judge them by their fruits, he said. And what are the fruits of this man's work? Misrepresentation, lies, and an absurd fantasy of a flood based on a hellish vision of what the Creator is really like. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, well, I stick by my guns. I'll try to answer as many questions as I can in a moment. But the evidence that is used to support the evolution theory is indeed lies and has been proven wrong. For example, your textbook will tell you that the appendix is vestigial. You don't need it anymore. That's a lie been proven wrong years ago. The appendix is part of your immune system. If your appendix is taken out, you can still live. There's no question about that. You can live without both your legs and both your arms and both your eyes also. That doesn't prove you don't need it. The appendix, well, I've got the wrong remote. Here's the problem. The appendix is part of the immune system. Anybody that studies biology or anatomy should understand that. Uh, see, there we go. You take your appendix out, you've got a better chance of getting quite a few diseases. Sometimes that's the best option, but the appendix is not vestigial. That should not be used as evidence for evolution. This textbook says the whale has a vestigial pelvis. Many organisms retain traces of their evolutionary history. For example, the whale retains pelvic and leg bones as useless vestiges. The National Center for Science Education in Berkeley, this little storefront building, says that Bossy evolved a blowhole this is how whales evolved, according to the National Center, whose, who, whose whole purpose is to keep creation out of schools, to defend the teaching of evolution against sectarian attack. This was started by Andrew Carnegie with a grant because he loved the evolution theory and gave a bunch of money to support the evolution theory in schools. This textbook again says the whale has a pelvis right here. The whales have a pelvis, vestigial pelvis, that serve no purpose. Whales have hind limb bones that have no function, this textbook says. Just imagine whales walking around, it's true. These are the bones they're talking about right there. These little bones are supposed to let us imagine that the whale used to walk around. Now, this one says the whale has no, pelvis has no apparent function. The whale's pelvis is evidence of its evolution from four-legged land-dwelling mammals. Now, this is simply a lie. Those bones are part of the whale's reproductive system. The male and female bones have, w whales have different bones there. Whales are pretty big, and that's part of the reproductive system. It has nothing to do with walking on land and never did. Okay? Here's a 15 and a half foot python snake skin I have in my museum. You can see if you look down near the anterior end, it has little tiny claws right there. One here and one here attached to a little tiny bone that goes up inside the snake's body. Now the textbook says, rudimentary hind legs of a python snake are supposed to be evidence for evolution. Those are not rudimentary hind legs. Those are used in mating. The snake can't talk. He can't say, scoot over, honey. And he doesn't have any arms, okay? This has nothing to do with a snake walking on land. They're so desperate for evidence for evolution that this becomes evidence for evolution. And it's not. Don't tell that to the kids. This one says humans have a tailbone that is of no apparent use, and this is part of the evidence for evolution. The vestigial tailbone in humans is homologous to the functional tail in other primates. Thus, vestigial structures can be viewed as evidence for evolution. I tell people, look, if you think the tailbone is vestigial, I will pay to have yours removed. <laughs> there are nine little muscles that attach to the tailbone, without which you cannot perform some valuable functions. I won't tell you what they all are, but trust me, you need that tailbone. This guy says the coccyx at the small bone at the human end of the human vertebral column, it has no 